Okay, so I decided to do what I hope would be an interesting video. I'm working in two different mediums. I'm, I'm, I'm sketching and I'm working in two different mediums for uh, two different drawings or uh, one painting, one drawing rather. But what I wanted to do was to uh, compare. Compare working. This is going to be a sketch that I'm doing in gouache. And the other one is going to be a sketch that I did on uh, in in the program called Le called Leonardo, so it's going to be a digital sketch. And what I wanted to do was compare the my approaches to both. And really, my approach to digital art is no different than my approach to uh, using traditional materials. I come to digital art as uh, as someone who's, who's basically learned art from uh, drawing and painting in um, traditional mediums like you know pencil charcoal uh, watercolors oils uh, um, gouache uh, you know just just the traditional mediums pen and ink and so forth so when I started um, doing digital art what I was looking for was something that would be an easy transition from uh, uh, doing um, doing what I normally do to uh, drawing digitally. Now, what helps is when I draw digitally, I have a tablet. Uh, I draw on the tablet. I, I, ha I used to have a Cintiq. Right now, I have a, a Monoprice, which is uh, s similar to a technique or uh, um, one of the many knockoffs. And, but I, I researched and I made sure that I got a great monitor uh, that acts as a tablet that I can draw on. Um, so, but it, it helps to have that and it helps to look for programs that, uh, that have brushes that mimic, uh, um, that mimic, uh, uh, you know, pencils and the mimic the other real life, their real life counterparts. You know, I, I like using Rebel because Rebel has a, a great watercolor brush, great, uh, uh, what they call acrylic brush, which looks like either acrylic or oil these nice and impasto uh, brush strokes they have a great pastel so forth uh, I like uh, sketching in Leonardo because I like the pencil brush and I like um, the ink brush brush and so forth it, it really looks a lot like the counterparts that that you know you would uh, um, that you would see in the real world well you know so what I'm doing now in, in, uh, um, in my drawing is just setting up for the paint and my approach is, you know, just to um, to to work on the shapes and the, and then the the placement of the features to measure to make sure that everything is in the right place before I start laying in the color and so forth. So I put a lot of emphasis and a lot of importance on these first uh, um, the, these these first few lines or, or many lines, however you want to see it. But it, it's all basically concerned about the placement of the features and um, and uh, the, the shapes and so forth to make sure that you know measurements and um, not so much detail it, it, it is more or less a map um, of, of the you know of, of the face and and it is what I, I um, it's a foundation on which I'm going to build the rest of the sketch on. So before I introduce the color, so a lot of this is going to be covered up, but a lot of this for me it's important because it helps me to map out where everything is going to go. So it, it solves a problem. It solves, you know, it, it's some some things that I don't have to think about as much. Um, when I when I start laying in the paints now the other thing is this um, I realize and I anticipate that um, I'm going to make corrections the the first um, the first lines that I put down are uh, estimates their best guesses they're um, they're, they're there um, you know I, I, I did the did my best thing the best I could at um, at putting these things down as close as I could. Now I could get better at this, and and that's something that I strive for. 
but um, this is the best you know my, my best estimates knowing that things are going to change and like I said I, I'm, I'm beginning to cover things the, the first this is gouache and the first um, the first wash that I'm putting down has a lot of water in it so I can still see the drawing underneath it, it doesn't get lost entirely but eventually that the, the entire drawing is going to be uh, um, covered and right now um, since I already worked on the placement and the shapes now I'm um, using a uh, um, just one color and in, in my brush I, I can concentrate on the light and the dark and and break that up into the big areas and then break that up into smaller areas and so forth but you know one of the things is that with with uh, um, my approach like I said to, to um, to digital art is basically the same as what you 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 see here, and you're going to see later as I, I work on the digital um, the, the the digital drawing that the approach is the same. The drawing is different, of course, but the, the approach is the same. And um, I, I really I really wanted to make this video because a lot of people talk about um, I, either one way or the other they down the other medium. If um, if you're used to working traditionally, you believe so much in what you do and believe that um, that uh, um, you, you you short yourself on the process of drawing and painting when you work in digital mediums, and um, that you know there's always the, the the complaint about the undo button and so forth that hey you don't have that when you work in traditional mediums. But you you do have other other approaches or other ways that you that you um, when you you cover up your mistakes and you're able to to continue the work. Uh, you know the easiest example of that would be of course an eraser. Uh, another thing is uh, um, I know uh, there was an artist, uh, a terrific watercolorist who works in watercolor and. Um, when he makes errors in watercolors, what he does is that he allows the area to dry. He he scrubs out that area, and and, and burnishes it as best as he could. Then he puts some uh, 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 just a, a layer of casein paint, casein white over it, so he's able to paint over that casein white and continue to work on the painting and that way cover up whatever mistake he has now. If you can do that to watercolor, watercolor is a difficult medium, um, and be successful at um, going ahead and, and 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 making those changes and so forth. That is kind of like an undo button. Now you have to do a lot more than just press a button, but there's a way of getting around mistakes. Uh, you know, if you make mistakes in 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 uh, um, in a pen and ink drawing, you either uh, throw on some some white paint or some white out or something or you know if you're working on very good paper you can you can scratch it off with a razor and then burnish the paper and so forth um, and probably you know if you're working on heavyweight paper that whole idea of using the casein would work for um, a pen and ink drawing as well because after it dries it, it you know it leaves a surface that's easier to work on but um, you know that that that's so much of for for the undo. Uh, there's ways of working around mistakes and so forth. Um, but uh, you know, if you work in digital art, um, you, you you have I've seen people with with uh, an attitude of hey, you know what? I'm ahead of the curve. I'm I'm what's new. I'm what's uh, um, you know I'm, I'm I'm the new thing and 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 this is a lot faster and a lot better which is again untrue uh, because the the thing they get lost in is the idea that the artist is the computer you know that that's as absurd as the idea that the artist is the the, the materials that you use whether you know it's a good brush or a good pencil or so forth now you you want to use the best materials that money can buy. But the fact is, is that um, the the artist is the brain behind the image. It's not the materials you use. It's the the concept, the the um, you know the, the, whatever foresight that you have, what's in your brain, and and you're being able to translate it into an image that you can share with someone else. 
and some somewhere along that line along the well, however you translate it however you communicate it um, however you put down your image that that becomes art in the viewers mind uh, if you're successful uh, just being able to draw or paint uh, regardless of what medium you use doesn't make you an artist you know art is it it's it's you know that it, it means that you're talented it means that you're you're um, you have great facility you can uh, depending on how well you draw or paint or so forth you know um, but uh, it's not as important as what you communicate a lot of times people get lost in details and are very impressed by art or, or, or drawings or paintings that they say oh that that looks like a photograph but it can be a very bland looking thing and after you get through with all you know being impressed by all the detail what have you got left you know and the thing is to in my mind um, an, in, an image is interesting uh, because of, of, of the, 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 what the artist communicated and how he communicated or he or she communicated it, you know, um, not because it's so detailed. Um, it begins to be just copying photographs is that that's the case, but I'm interested in the marks that the artist left, the kind of, um, brush strokes and, and, and the colors that they chose, uh, um, you know how this all works how, how they, 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 they took whether they use reference or they work from life or they work from imagination what what you know what is it that they communicated that, that looks interesting and I think the most important thing about a painting or drawing is that um, that it has to look interesting it, you know you it can look real and it can be uninteresting or it can be um, very abstract and you you just kind of shrug your shoulders as well what is it or it can be either one of the two and be interesting uh because of you know uh i i don't know um how to put it but just how whatever the artist did to make it interesting whether it's his choice of color um whether it's uh, um, the composition, whether it's, you know, just whatever. Um, and it's not just the artist uh, facility or, or, you know, and, and I believe all of that is important. I, I do. I, I think that I obviously I paint and um, I try to be as naturalistic as possible as far as what I know. And, and I, I plan to grow in, in you know, in my ability to to draw and paint and so forth but um, and, and so I think it's important because it's it's a language it's a way of communicating um, and, and so forth but I think that um, that in and of itself by itself is not what makes the art now talking about um, facility or, or talking about you know uh, methods of um, drawing and painting I just want to talk about uh, gouache for a second and because obviously I'm doing a gouache painting now I'm, I'm going back into the dark areas after I, I've done uh, um, after I've done the painting you know I like I said I, I, I mapped it out I looked at the the, the, um, the features and measured it and so forth and the shapes and then I went back into it and I, I started with the uh, um, the big areas of, of light and dark and then I refined those and I went I let that lead me into smaller and smaller areas and after a while I have so much paint on the paper and and um, gouache is a great paint that you can continue to reactivate you know just by adding water so sometimes I'm just pushing the, the paint that's already on the paper by just adding water and using that to blend and to push the paint around um, so it's just uh, um, I, I love gouache. It's a fun medium to work with, and there's there's so much you can do with it, 
it's kind of like a, a in between between a, a watercolor and 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 oil or, or acrylic or whatever because you can work on it you can work with it transparently and then you can also layer it so that you can work opaquely and, and paint over areas um, and, and, and blend areas as well so so I'm, I'm just about finished with this uh, uh, gouache painting here and, um, and then the, the next uh, um, thing I'm going to do is a drawing in, in, in uh, an application called Leonardo um, but you'll see that between the two there's very little difference between the method that I use. Um, it's all, it's still the same thing. And, and to me, um, whether I'm working in in uh, um, traditional media, whether it's pencil or paint or whatever, or whether I'm working in digital media, regardless of the software that I use, a lot of times I, I, I put up... Um, I put up videos on different software. I, I know that um, there are times where I kind of focus in on a particular software. When I started doing digital, I really did a lot of um, a lot of Sketchbook, and at the time it was Sketchbook Pro, because Sketchbook Pro was so easy to get to learn. It wasn't a whole lot of uh, I, I didn't have to uh, hunt everywhere for brushes I didn't have to do too much on the technical side and and I don't honestly I don't want to do that I want to keep uh, the technical part as as simple as possible um, which is the reason why I don't get too much into Photoshop I don't think Photoshop is a great program and I have used it but I, I want something where um, where the brushes are within reach where the brushes are, are easy, not just easy to find, but I don't have to do too much to them to, 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 to use them. So that's the reason why I like a lot of the programs that I do, whether it's, it's Sketchbook, uh, which is a great program, and it's a free program now, and um, uh, from Autodesk. You can look at their website. This is the finished painting, um, and then uh, from here I'm going to go on into the digital uh, uh, drawing but um, I, like I said I like sketchbook uh, Leonardo is another great program which is seems to be forever in its beta format but that's okay um, I, I you know I purchased it it wasn't a, a, a big purchase um, but I get all the updates and the, the program continues to improve so here's a uh, uh, Leonardo and um, I started my drawing and you, you can see that the approach is basically the same thing. Um, um, just uh, basically uh, looking for, I'm, I'm mapping everything out. I'm, I'm looking for the shapes, measuring, and, and so forth, letting, uh, uh, making sure that uh, um, these, uh, uh, these uh, um, first lines help me to find the the where where things go on on um, the face so and then later on I'll come into it and I have the same approach I have the same approach of looking for the big uh, uh, for the large areas of light and dark and then I, I'll go back into it and and, and uh, work on those and refine them and so forth so my you'll see that my approach is not different and my approach is the same um, regardless, like I said, of the software that I use, whether it's Sketchbook Pro, Leonardo, uh, Rebel is another great program, um, and, and uh, you can use Mischief, which is a much simpler program. Um, there's a, a free version and a paid version of that. Um, the, the benefit of the paid version is that, one, it's not too much money, and two, um, you know, you have more layers and more options and things to work with. Uh, whereas opposed to the, the, the freer version, you, there's, there's a limitation, but you can do great stuff with it, especially if you're just sketching. They're, these the uh, programs like um, my, like Mischief are great for sketching. Programs like um, like uh, Sketchbook 
and and I believe Leonardo and and Rebel are great for both sketching and for producing finished works, whether they're illustrations or, or so forth. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're great for that. One of the things that with Leonardo, it's very limited as far as, as, far as the brushes. There's, you have a, a wider variety of choices in a program like Sketchbook and, of course, a program like Photoshop. Um, but um, what you might call it uh, um, in these other programs like Leonardo there's a limited amount of brushes there's some tinkering you can do with the brushes that are there uh, the you know that that may be a drawback but at the same time what's a plus for Leonardo is that the brushes that it does have are great brushes uh, um, and they, they do they do a great job um, so Leonardo is a great uh, um, program, you know, uh, regardless of um, it, it's not may not be as robust as some of the other programs, but it definitely has what you need. Rebel is the same way. Now, Rebel has a little bit more than um, than than Leonardo, but definitely not as much as a program like um, like Sketchbook or, or, or Photoshop. But what it does have. Um, is is some really great brushes, whether you're using the pastel brush or you know in conjunction with the charcoal, or whether you're using the pencil or whether you're using the um, watercolor or, or the acrylic um, brush, all these brushes do very very well at mimicking you know real the the, the real brushes in traditional in in uh, traditional media. However, they are. Um, um, they they are digital, and but they do a good job. They do a good job. Um, so, I've, the the one thing um, though it seems with the uh, um, with the uh, Leonardo and its pencil brush, is that I I I, I, I it tends to lose the um, that real feel when you when when you you know the bigger you make the brush. So I, I don't like the look of it. It, it. it begins to, oh, I don't know, um, I guess look more digital. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't resemble a pencil. It'd be great if they add a brush that's like a, a, a flat pencil stroke, you know, like a, um, what they used to have, uh, carpenter's pencils back in the day. And I'm, I'm sure they still have them now. And that's just a, a, a pencil that it's like a, um, a real long flat pencil kind of rectangular and um, you can make some very broad strokes with that um, it would be great if they had something like that but um, what like I said what they do have works well um, you know you just have to uh, I guess I well I just have to um, work with the smaller smaller size for the most part now that can change. I, I mean, I'm, I'm like a, you know, I, I'm basically also still exploring these softwares. Um, so they, they could be something that I missed, you know, and um, that which does happen. And, and I grow and I understand uh, um, how to use the software better and uh, to, to do different things with it. So, um, but like I said, it, it is serviceable. It does work and it does do a great job. And you see from from um, my drawing here, even though I, I tried to be careful at laying out um, the the map underneath of where everything goes, again, the, the, after I've I've accomplished that, the second thing that I shoot for is to look for the major patterns of light and dark, and define those. And I, I I look for a dark, which is not the darkest dark, and then you know you of course you have the light of the paper. And I go back into that paper and I, I, I may take um, this dark and do it like maybe two steps lighter. And then I could also go back into the dark and then pick something that's two, two steps darker. And that'll give me, you know, uh, more values to, 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 to play with and, and to refine the drawing with. But like I said, again, the, the, the approach is, is pretty much the same. I don't use a lot of filters or anything like that. Like I said, I don't want to get too technical with the drawing. I, I, 
I, I like the fact that it is more about um, what I'm able to do as far as drawing and painting and, and that that's pretty much um, you know do, doing it the, the, the traditional way regardless of what medium that I'm using so this application is really I'm, I'm really taking a digital applic application and doing it in in a, tr in a very traditional way and using it in a very traditional way as far as the brushes are concerned and um, you know I, I not that I don't use the undo button but I, I, I don't think about it so much and I don't um, uh, um, rely on that as much as I do the the eraser you know uh, because uh, it's just what I'm used to doing I'm not used to going for the undo button but I am used to making corrections in my drawings because uh, um, that's the way I work I you know my my um, like I said my first um, strokes or the first things that I put down are what I would call my best guesses and you know I, I don't skimp on that I don't try to to, to do it thinking oh it's going to change later I try to, to, to make as few mistakes as possible in the beginning and to be as precise as possible in the beginning so that leaves less work for me to do as I go on and I finish the drawing or the painting uh, and that's uh, whether or not I use uh, I mean it that doesn't matter the medium that I use whether it's traditional or digital the approach is the same so see now I'm going back in with a, a darker uh, um, gray here um, to, to, to refine the drawing underneath and so forth so that that's all it is it's about you know making your best guesses and then making your corrections and refining it again regardless of what medium you use so I don't know if my video would lay to rest that, that, that argument about what's better. I don't think either one is better. I think the artist has to work on the artist being better and let the medium, uh, um, you know, just, just use whatever medium that you're going to use to, to help you to make, you know, to, to make your art and to make better and better drawings, whether it's a pencil, uh, or, you know, a wooden pencil, whether it's a digital pencil you know so like I said I don't know uh, if my video is going to make any difference but that's my two cents about it that's what I, I think about it it's kind of annoying um, the stands that people take um, and it's you know it's that 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 argument about what's better that that's like the same as trying to say well which medium is better watercolor or oil well what do you do with it what are you doing with whatever meeting, how, medium you use? How are you making it interesting? It doesn't, you know, the medium, or is, are you saying that the medium is what makes you, the, 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 the computer, it's what makes you a better artist? Um, or a particular brush is what makes you a better artist? You know, if, if all you want to do is, is arrive at an image, you know, um, that that that's pretty much easy enough to do but if you want to try and communicate something that you think is interesting then that that's a different story and i think like i i think i, I believe i said that in the beginning that the main thing that you want to do is to create something that's interesting you know it's a, it's not just showing your facility and not showing your your technical ability but to make something interesting to um so that you know when 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 someone looks at it they stay looking at it for a while they they they, they try to figure out what about the image is interesting to them what it you know uh and how how does that make the individual who created it interesting you know i think that um oh i know that um the artist robert henry had said that when you know when when the art spirit is alive and someone and they are a creative person they are interesting to themselves and they're interesting to the people around them so I'm going to let this continue to play out um, um, but that's pretty much my say on on it um, 
as far as you know my approaches to both digital and to traditional media um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to take this time to let you know that I have a, a ton of uh, not a ton but quite a few tutorials on um, Gumroad uh, in regards to digital media and traditional media um, I have uh, um, some videos on there that are available for purchase and download there's also uh, a patreon page that that I have that um, I uh, maintain and I, I post videos the videos that are available on Gumroad I also post them for my patrons on patreon uh, depending on on the tier that you choose there's a one dollar tier and there's a three dollar tier so um, depending on the, the tiers that you use the different rewards um, there is a sketchbook every month um, as a reward and also uh, um, uh, um, there is a, a high resolution image of um, some work that I did at that, that, that point uh, that I share with my patrons every month um, so um, there are videos there's the gumroad videos there are other videos um, tutorials and so forth that are available on um, both gumroad and, and patreon so come join me Come join me. Um, in the meantime, I hope this. Um, I hope you don't mind my rant. i um, in talking about uh, the the uh, painting traditionally, or painting or drawing traditionally, and doing it digitally. That, in my opinion, there's no difference, or at least according to the way I approach it, there's no difference. It's still, um, and you know what? It, it, it. I think if I would work any other way. It would kind of kill it for me because I'm, I'm, this is what I, I enjoy doing and I have fun doing. I, I mean, if I wanted to arrive at an image a lot quicker, I would become a photographer. And um, that's not to downplay photography. To, photography is, is uh, another art form, and you know, but um, it's different from from drawing and painting. That there's uh, a different method involved. And I like being able to draw and paint um, and arrive at the image the way that I do. Um, so anyway, like I said, thank you for watching this video. I'm going to let this play out and maybe I'll speed it up a little bit more um, to get to, to, to the final image. All right. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye bye.